Welcome to Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. It's the 24th of March, 2022. Uh, agenda topics, we've got news, using Crowd in Enterprise for localization, Linux installer switch from System 5 init to System D, She Code Africa, and open PRs as possible. We're going to plan for a demonstration and do it live today on Crowd in Enterprise. Thanks to Alex for being here. Any other agenda topics we need to put on the list before we before we begin going through the agenda? All right, then let's do it. So first, welcome Kevin Martins. Kevin is a new documentation contributor. We're delighted to have him with us. Kevin, give us a two or three sentence introduction of yourself. Uh, yeah, I'm from Boston, Mass. I've uh, been writing since I can remember and have a background in communications and support. And I'm really excited to just be part of the project and start contributing to the docs. Thanks, Kevin. Welcome. Grateful, great to have you here. So next topic, we're going to have Alex take me through a tour of enabling Crowd in Enterprise on the Jenkins platform label of plugin. So Two weeks ago, Alex showed us a demonstration of how to do, how easy it is to manage translations using Crowd in Enterprise for open source projects. So Alex, let's go ahead and you coach me on wh where to go and what to do. Yeah, the domain is intellectual sites. Intellectual I'm sorry, intellectual sites? Intellectualsites.crowdin.com. Okay, intellectual okay, intellectual sites dot crowd in dot com. com okay like that that is perfectly fine okay yeah, and then you had to sign up that's in the upper right corner and, and i can just use my github can... credentials yeah. okay and it's only accessing public data so that's perfectly healthy okay all right, yeah. uh, okay, now I log in and it will probably ask me how and I log in with GitHub. And you oh, it wants to know who I am, of course. So yeah. great, and yes, I accept the terms and conditions, okay. And it's okay that I used a, a Gmail account. I didn't have to use a, Yeah. okay, so verify yeah. email. Yeah, you don't need to do that now. Okay. Because we have no password because it's provided by GitHub OAuth. Ah, right. I make okay. you a manager real quick. Mark. Yeah, Mark, wait. Go to right here. Okay, refresh the page. All right, so refresh the page. And in yeah. the intervening time, I've also verified my email. Now what? Oh, it was quick. If you had to console. Okay, go to console. Yeah, you click on create. Create over here on the, the right. Yeah, let's name and, a platform label or plugin. And does it need to be, can I use spaces, etc.? It's just a name, it's not the URL or ID. Or okay, something. so I, I certainly can, all right. And I want to go to languages, you parlo italiano, so I want Italian. You can also and... click prefill and click the 30 most selected languages. Oh, oh, wait a sec, you say there's prefill here? Yeah. In the top 30 uh, oh. selected languages, you can fill them automatically. And then I can clear the ones, okay, I don't expect yeah. uh, Afrikaans, Catalan. I'm just using that as mostly a sample. Right, okay, so Danish, Dutch, no, Finn, no, French, yes, German, yes, Greek, no, Hebrew, no, not yet, Italian, Japanese, possibly. Brazilian, Portuguese might happen. Uh, Russian, I might persuade somebody to do. Okay, Spanish, I know I can. Swedish. All right, good. Okay, okay so now I've got I've got 10 languages. Is 10 too many? Is it's 10 okay that I That's choose fine. 10? That's fine. Okay. Let's scroll down a bit and select okay. crowdsourcing on the workflow. Crowdsourcing? That basically, that basically means that everyone can sign up on this instance and provide translations. Okay. And yeah, you have to create project. All right. Yeah, below at, at your screen, you get a little tutorial because you signed up on it initially. Okay, so this is saying, 
hey, there are integrations I could use. And one yes. of those integrations I assume is GitHub. Yes. Okay. And so, and I could also invite people. Okay. And set up to you to invite individual volunteer translators. Okay. Yeah. Got it. If you want to integrate your GitHub project, you click on project settings in the bottom left corner. Okay. So project settings. Uh, is it let me pick your project, try to label up like it. And so I probably, I meant integrations. Oh, 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 okay. All right. It's above, so, pro it's above project settings, but you need to scroll down. I see. Okay. So, so if I scroll down yeah. integrations, got it. Okay. Yeah. There we're going to pick GitHub. GitHub. Okay. Oh, and I need, probably needed to pick the connect, but all right. Set up integration. Yeah. You don't okay. include the personal access token here because it relies on the OAuth. Okay, so so it's it's saying that it wants organization act or it will get organization access to Jenkins CI. Yeah, is that only, is that safe in this? Oh, it's only but only it's public only information. Only. It just needs to know where to get the data from. Okay, so it's not. Uh, this is. And this is only public information, so it's not going to get access to private repositories no. if there were any. It's okay. reading public information from Jenkins CI, but access read and write data from your account, like to your okay. repository. All right, so this, this application will be read and modify repository webhooks. Okay, no direct code access. And it will have access to read and write public and private repository data, including, okay, so... Yeah, that's needed to to publish the translations from Cloud into GitHub. Okay, all right. So I think this is safe then. Let's yeah. go ahead, authorize. Oh, oops, now I've got to pull out my security key. Two-factor authentication is my friend. It'll be just a minute while I do that. Hang on. I love my YubiKey, really, truly. Yeah, it's like my, my just, chain. <laughs> just the best way to do two-factor authentication. Okay, use security key. And it now says, oh, that was easy, much faster than usually I get two or three failures. Okay, great. Yeah, now it scans your your account. And if it's okay. done, you see your little avatar on the gray box and you can select your repository on the drop down. Okay, and I assume it's querying 1,800 or as many as 2,000 repositories here in the Jenkins CI org. So this is gonna be a while, isn't it? No, it, no, it queries the data from your account. It's not accept, it's, we, di we didn't install Crowded on Jenkins, just accessing oh. OAuth through your account. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, so, so then, okay. But this so. is just one way to integrate it. You don't necessarily need to do that. You can also use the GitHub workflow to push and pull things, for example. But I think we, we are going to do this today because this is how you would do it through Crowded. Okay, so, so it's going to eventually finish querying the list of repositories from my account oh. all right and now i select and it will be you can also type in platform yeah so platform you're jenkins something. ci says platform there it is okay yeah branches we for want... translation we'd like the master branch yeah and this is, this, this this is, is okay branch. as a name yeah that's the name the branch name it creates where it pushes the changes to okay now, if All you right. scroll down, you can say, this is fine. We sync them every hour. I think Platform Labeler doesn't have much traffic for new contributions. So this is also fine. If you click Save, you okay. can configure. And, and now help me on this. Sorry, before we go up, the duplicate strings, is this a something that should matter to me. I'm used to thinking that in Java, duplicate strings are always translated as, in the, as the same string. Yeah, the default duplicate is fine here. Oh, default is fine. Okay, yeah. good. All right. Okay, save then. Yeah, now we have integrated the repository and now we set up the branch where the language files are on. If you click on the three menu dots, right next to the exclamation mark. No, the one below. Oh, below, right there, yeah. okay. And we click on branch configuration. Okay. The crowd and YML is the file that is gonna be pushed to your default branch on GitHub in the next run. Okay, so I'm gonna pre press continue here and this is a file they will place there that configures crowd in for my repository. Yes. Okay, and so 
the source pr- path is where the repository uh, where the translation strings are coming from and the translated files path is where they are going to so the source files path would be like i think source main resources and so on okay yeah. so if i do source main resources yeah, you can work with asterisks here to include the nested folders and relative paths source slash main slash resources and is it ant style pattern match or if you hover over the question mark in the circle you can see what is supported oh good okay wildcard selectors oh good okay so like something like that should get anything in the resources yeah and now i don't know if this plugin has had been had any setup for for properties at all so we i may be it may be completely infeasible well it's i guess it's got jelly files and those should be uh translatable but well no we need property files right we need something that well guide you can me. Use property files but you also have html files that would turn oh, well. oh right right okay I and those like are localized or something i saw perfect yeah but i would add asterisk.html to exclude the jelly files okay because jelly in this case is not a translatable thing we would want okay so that's that gives me one now what if i need to put property files as well whoops that would be dot properties file uh, dot properties and so do i add that as a separate line here uh i think you can have several strings and several paths set up i'm not sure how to do it at the moment okay all right well so let's but, we but know html files can be translated so let's translate one of those yeah and basically okay. you can copy the source parts and put it into the bottom one remove the um last part the asterisk of html okay and if you hover over the question mark Ah, ah, good. Yeah. These are the so, supported placeholders, how you can name the file. Ah, good. Okay, so it would be something like original file name. Yeah. No, well, no, is that is that with or without the suffix? That's only the original file name. But we want original file name and then the underscore. Underscore. And then we want the two le- two char- two letter code. Yeah, two letters code. Okay, all right. Dot HTML. Yeah, we can use dot HTML or to work with the placeholders. I think it's file extension or what was it named? Oh, oh yes, you're right. There is a file extension. I saw that. Okay, it's yeah, file this extension. way by doing this that this single translated path would then work for properties as well. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, and now we can save the changes. Okay, and now how do I get the save to be active? We first need to click save the save changes at the bot at the top. Oh, at the top. Got it. Okay. Yeah. There we go. And now we can save it. All right. Okay, and now you can hit the sync now button. And if I hit sync now. Yeah, and if so it's now if you hover over the progress bar, it tells you what's going on. Okay, so upload source files. So they read our read my repository. They're now going to download with their working area, download translations, process webhooks. So they've hooked in webhooks into my into the Jenkins CI platform labeler plugin. And now they're actually doing an initial translation? No, it's just no. setting up the default branches and the crawl.yml file. Because if you head back to GitHub and check the platform labeler plugin, you will see that Mark Wade committed this file a few seconds ago. But, okay. but it was processed through GitHub. Uh, Crowdin. Okay, so let's let's go see that. So what I should see is yeah. if I look at the commits, here is update the Crowdin configuration file. And there it is. Yeah, this is what we just created through the web interface. Like we can see, it's also possible to do it through GitHub and modify the file here yeah All and if right. you have if you head back to crowdin okay click on project crowdsource the translations okay. crowdsource so you say translations crowdsource i'm okay how am i missing this roughly where is it's it on, on the, the left it's translations 
Okay, crowdsource. Here we go. Okay. Yeah, we need to publish the project so it's available on our instance. Ah, okay. But Just before if, we do that, I want that, to give. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. If you don't do that, the project remains private and only you and me can access it. And if you click the publish button, it's available to everyone on my instance. Okay, so I think I've got an, oh no, I don't have an icon for this one. Okay, so no icon, I can't. I was going to give it a, good, a better logo. I, for the Git plug and I have a better logo. So, okay, so I just press publish. Yeah. And if you just head to intellectualsites.carlin.com, it, it does appear there. Okay, so now if I open up intellectualsitescrowdin.com. Yeah, that, that's our platform label plugin. There it is. Okay, with a with a terrible logo. Okay, so it needs a much better logo. Okay. And if we if we click on it, we can see the languages you just set up. All right, and so I can see the English language, for instance. And yes, here is a. Before Oh, yeah, this is the initial tutorial everyone is shown to. <laughs> okay, that's. But before I would translate something, I would head back to the project configuration page. Okay. These are the three menu dots. Uh, right, right here. Yeah, project settings. Okay. Because we want to configure it to only export strings that are approved and translated. Otherwise, we get the pre translated files with the English default. On GitHub. I think we don't want that. So we head to project settings. That's on the project bottom. settings. Okay. So project settings. Yeah, we scroll down a bit further to the box. Yeah. And we say export strings with at least one translation. That is okay. fine. Okay. And we want to export translations with a specific number of approvals. Ah, okay. To now we have approved strings on GitHub. Tell me, so tell me again, what is an approval then in this case? That would equal uh, Git. Uh, that would equal uh, pull request approval on GitHub. Like ah. Basically, who reads over something and says that's fine, we can use it. Yeah. Okay. And we want to skip untranslated files. Skip untranslated string. Oh, skip untranslated files, not strings. Yeah, it inherits it. Oh, okay. All right. So only files let files that have an approved string land on GitHub. So we so we don't need to look over it on GitHub again. Okay. And if we save it. Save it. Okay. I think we need to head to your repository first and clean the pull request because we didn't configure that previously. Oh, yeah. okay. So if we go to to here, there will probably be some. Pull, there is a pull request. Yeah. New crowd in updates, and what we see here is what you had yeah, warned is, about. It is yeah. that it's proposing the English text in the German file, for example. Yeah, this is what we did configure. That's and why so, I said you should configure that first before we do anything further. But you can also prevent this. If you don't start the Crowdin translation workflow immediate, immediately and start it later on, if you set up a project. Okay, so I could have avoided this by just using a different sequence, sequence of steps. Could you say that, those, that sequence again? Uh, if you create a project, like you can head back to the overview if you want. Okay, so if I go back to, no, let's see, go all the way back to, to here. Workspace. Yeah, and if you click on create, Okay. You can just click on delay workflow start. Ah, if I had enabled this, then, yeah. okay, then I wouldn't have received that pull request. Yes. Okay. This is what I didn't mention yet, but you can basically pause them to prevent that. I would, now, just, close the, I would just close the pull request and delete the branch to avoid possible conflicts because we don't need it and can't use it. Okay. So, so, so in this case... PR. And that's not a problem. So I'm going to request changes. Oops. You can't do that because you opened it. Oh, oh, right, right. Of course. So I'm just gonna have to close it. Okay. <laughs> I use I'm used to working with Dependabot where I just close every close it if or ask Dependabot to close it. All right. Closing because I don't want local language um or English copied to the local language file. 
We've already got that. Okay, close with comment. And now you said that I need to also delete the branch that it created just to avoid potential problems. Yeah. Okay, and now it's it, it been a while. A new, it will always create a new branch. That's okay, uh, I'm used to using the command line to delete a branch. Any pointers on how I delete a branch from the GUI? Or if not, I'm Go going to bring up my back command to the line. requests tab. Okay. Oh, oh, and just delete it from inside the closed yeah. pull request. Very good idea. Why didn't I think of that? Okay. Good. It's right here. Delete branch. Done. Thank you. Yeah. And now we can head back to Corin and basically start translating things from a translator's view. Okay. So now we go back to to crowd in where in this view or in this view is not available to everyone this is just the manager view ah okay the default the default view is available on the default url okay like intellectual so sites .crowd .com. so if i go if i take this url start up a new tab and go here yeah yeah we and, have our platform labeler plugin okay and now if and i you, just click translate yes you could basically select any language you want to contribute to. Okay, so I am going to contribute a translation in Italian. Okay. Below you can see the machine translation examples. My Italian is not much good, but you could verify, can you verify that one of them is actually appropriate? Uh, they are all better than I would do. So, okay. <laughs> General l'etichetta. I'm not sure what. I'm not sure if that's the word that Jenkins uses for. Uh, for. Ah, there we go. I like this one. Sistema operativo better. Okay, so I click the use and save to choose yes. to use that one. Okay, and that's basically it. Okay, and and that now has. I've I've now started a session and I can do do more of those. So let's say I'm going to do several of them. I can do another one that says this looks like this a similarly useful. Gen okay, general etiquette. Okay, so the and if if you click on. Yeah, this is basically how you can translate things. Of course, you can also put in something on your own. The machine translation is just the recommendation on what it thinks is the appropriate term. They often fit well, but sometimes you have strings it doesn't know about. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so well, and and these may be terribly flawed because I'm not a native Italian speaker, right? So, so I I embrace the fact that I may in fact be making a horrible, okay, where did, why did, where is Sistema Operativo? There we go, okay. Yeah, I mean, I can't verify whether they are somewhat of appropriate, but if you say they fit, then I think they fit. <laughs> well, and, and we've got a good sample here. So, okay, so we've, I've now acted as though I were a native Italian speaker, which I am not. And, and now do I have to do something to submit this as a pull request? No, from a translator, few not, but US plugin maintainer can click on crowdsourcing. Okay, uh, so as a plugin maintainer. Italian all strings crowdsourcing. Okay, so crowdsourcing was here. No, no, I mean in the editor. Oh, oh, from the editor. Okay. Yeah, if you there you have the crowdsourcing tab. Okay. Now we can switch to proofreading. Ah, all right. Okay, so now this is this is I've now switched from translation contributor mode into I'm the recipient of it. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Okay. All right. So, and it's giving me a nice tutorial. I'm going to put the tutorial away because you're going to give me the similar. Okay. Yeah. And now you can basically view what you just translated. On the left, you can see the origin string and on the right, you have your translation for it. And if you think that some of the translations are appropriate, you can click the tick next to them. Okay, so I check this to say, yes, that's appropriate. That's yeah, appropriate. You can, you can also approve them in batches. I could do this to select them all. Okay. Yeah. All right. And if you click the tick in the upper left corner next to the select all, if you approve them all, yeah, approve selected strings. So this has taken me as a maintainer 
I've been able to review the strings and now I've got, I've got those, will it now submit the pull request and merge it? Or how does, what's the next step? I mean, it will propose the pull request, but it won't merge them automatically. I mean, it could, you could configure it like that, but you always want to look over things again. Okay. All right, so I've I've submitted, now I don't see a pull request yet. So is it that it batches them or is there something I need to do? I think we set up the sync hour to one hour initially. So, so one a, hour from now, yeah. it will submit a pull request. Yeah, otherwise we would hit GitHub rate limitation quite fast if every string would be a new pull request to your account. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so, so I have uh, now, can you guide me? How would I invite others? Let's say you, because you actually are a German native speaker. Uh, how would I invite you to, or, or Germans in general, to contribute to this? Yeah, let's close the editor first. Yeah, you're okay. already in the right point. Just okay, so right quit editor. close. Uh, quit oops. editor tab. Quit edit. I'm not, okay, quit. On the left side, the three dots, uh, three Bark thinks this. Oh, yeah, quit editor. Bottom, quit editor. Okay. Close just Great. close the tab. <laughs> yeah, like you can see on the left side, there's a members tab. Right under me mm. a bit uh, above. Members is ah oh, right there. Okay. Yeah, I'm already invited because I own this instance, but this is where you could invite others. Okay, so so if for instance I'm going to do this, we're going to assume Kevin speaks an interesting language. And so yeah. I'm going to invite Kevin. Okay, so I've provided an email. And now do I want to give him access to all languages, translation and workflow steps? For example, but you can also opt that out and add him to selected languages. Okay, this is where I ask Kevin. Kevin, are any, do you actually speak any of these languages? Uh, so at this point in time, I'm going to go with just English. My French is conversational at best. Okay, so French, English it is. Great. All right, so, so I can invite Kevin to English. Excellent. Okay, yeah. good. And now he's pending as proofreader, like you can see. As proofreader for this project. You are the owner of this project. And the other people you can see are just other organization administrators my instance. Excellent. Okay, so so when Kevin accepts that invitation, he'll be able to proofread English language messages, English language help, so in the HTML files, uh, and it, when I add property files, he'll be able to to also proofread English language property files with their English message. Yes. And if he accepts those strings, they will land as a pull request for you on GitHub. Okay, now if I, when I add a property file, it will it will be in English initially. So, does it allow him to modify them as well? Uh, the source string or something? source string. Yeah, but we would need to change our file detection first because we just configured HTML files initially. Oh, oh, right, right. Okay, all and right. I think there are just HTML and properties files used in plugins often. So, that would be the two main things. You need to opt in, but if you but if you remember, you can also use regexp to define a clause, so you can easily spin something up as copy paste example for HTML and properties. Great. Okay, so Kevin's ready to review, and and you have permission to. So would you be willing to do a a, a German translation of one or two strings here, so that we could watch that, so that I could see that arriving in an hour or so as well. Yeah, for sure. So is it okay if I stop sharing my screen and we have you share to show how that works? Yeah, I could do that. Okay. Just let me, uh, yeah, platform label, plugin, and let me need the screen. Yeah, that's the platform label, plugin, German. Yeah, and like here we can have the here we can see the file tree of all those files again. I want to contribute to help dash architecture. Yeah, this is like the string of the file, mm -hmm. generate label with the OS architecture. 
Mm. I would go with this one that fits the cloak. Yeah, that fits quite well. I can save this right away. And that's already all translations in this file. We could go on to the next file. Mm, let's go with this one. Uh, okay, now, and I see the highlights. That's indicating changes from previous strings. And um, oh, it's saying that there's 77% match. Okay. Yeah, that is how Crowley thinks that a translation is appropriate. Like a term like AMD 64 or Ubuntu is. Those are like not the common words Crowley knows about because that is not something you use in a typical sentence. Mm -hmm. But if we think have, but if we have more more projects on Jenkins and it learns from that, it would be able to pick them up and generate useful sentences. That currently we are relying on the machine translation Crowley knows about, but it basically learns from projects you can opt into. And if you have more projects on this instance, it would be likely be aware of what these means. And now does Crowdin have a way to do some form of translation dictionary so that all Jenkins usages of, for instance, in here in the German language, label looks like a, 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 a standard German word, but I assume there may be other words in German that could mean label that would be synonymous with it. I mean, label as this word doesn't exist in the German languages. It just picked it up because it understood it from the context. Oh, okay. So that is not, that's not strictly a German word. No. Ah, oh, okay. But I think the machine translation, I think would be a hard time with terms like agents or branches or something like that. It doesn't know right. about yet. Right. And, and those are, those are what I'd call high, highly or high frequency terms. The, the concept of an agent or a node or a controller are probably words that have very specific translations in, in Jenkins' world into, into English or into German, but the they, they may not know what those words are. Yeah. Okay. I just switched to, I just switched the view. Now we are in translation memories. Oh, okay. This is accessing all projects this instance hosts. We are currently only using the translation managers from the plugin itself. But I could opt in all dictionaries and use words or strings from different projects. Okay, so so conceptually, I I could opt in to use the Git plugin there or the Jenkins integration demos and think, okay, those might have might use related words in their translation memory. Yeah, for example. Okay. I mean, I could opt all things and use the words from all different projects, but certain projects just have a different vocabulary and use different terms. So it wouldn't be quite appropriate here. But yeah, we can basically opt in the demo from a couple of weeks ago. And if there are matches to the words in here, like we can see, this is what Claudin, this is what you translated, this is my translation, and this is the source files. And this is how it generates the machine translation and learns some of these strings in the context. It's just it's not it's not a plain dictionary that translates words by word, but more by context. If you go back to the platform labeler plugin, let's say help dash name. Yeah, the translation didn't didn't change much because the other project just had about 80 words or something. It's not a lot to learn from, mm -hmm. but that's basically the concept how it works. Like the more people, the more projects contribute to one instance, the less translators have to translate for other plugins. Right. And, and that's, I think what you just described is the power of a translation memory, right? It, yes. it remembers commonly used words and will apply them with some, some good guesses. Yeah. Like if you have the word agent and translated it a few times, like 50 or 60 times, it definitely knows how to treat it, how the context it belongs in and so on. Like in, if you have a few projects here with a few similar strings, it creates its own dictionary of Jenkins specific knowledge. Now, is there a way that I could, for instance, load Jenkins core as a read only source of translation memory? Or is that, that not, not viable here? I mean, that it learns from translations. 
it learns from the input. Like basically the source string is this one and based on your decision of the answer here, it learns what is the most appropriate term. Uh, so it, it wouldn't read, for instance, any existing German language translations in Jenkins core and assume that those were done by a human. I mean, that would be possible, but on the other hand, you would need to fairy file all individual things if they actually still fit because uh, there are still lots of legacy terms in core that are not quite up to date anymore. So, okay, so an example there would be, there may be the German translation of the word master yeah, in, a, in a, a Jenkins core translation that should be converted to the German word for controller. Yeah. Got it. Okay, thank you. All right, so, so better to treat this as I'm starting fresh. And from this fresh start, we're going to, we're going to use the translations that arrive and that will give us better and better words to use in the translation memory. Okay. Yeah. I think integrating core would be a bigger task because it does offer the size and amount of files it has. And some of the files are, let's say, quite dated, mm -hmm. not more up to date. So if you basically import anything here, we, like, we could end up with wrong translations or wrong translation memories, which could have a bad influence on other plugins. If other plugin authors decide to use core translation memories right okay and and i think that makes sense it is in this case particularly for the scope of this experiment much better that we don't risk tainting it with anything other than new translations yeah okay what what else would you like to show thanks so much for doing this alex so i've already i'm already going to within the next 60 or 90 minutes have a pull request that includes two German language translations and several Italian language translations with now a facility that others could contribute translations if they'd like. Yeah, for example. Oh, that's great. But just to note, this is just one way how to integrate Crowden because we went through the GitHub integration, but the same as possible through a GitHub action provided by Crowden for example, if you have multiple contributors or for core where you don't want to bind the integration on one single person because it uses your OAuth scope for that. I think. Okay, now that I'm not, I'm not sure I understood what you were describing. So you're saying that, that I could have done it something other than having an integration through this, this very comfortable web UI. There's an, another way to do it through GitHub Actions? Yeah, you can basically do the same with GitHub Actions and a personal access token from Crowdin. For example, to use it in core and provide translations as GitHub Actions user and not as Mark Wait. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, and that's, I, I'm delighted that it's coming in as Mark Wait because I made the choice <laughs> as which text I should be using, right? So, okay, good. Yeah, the point is basically if you have a plugin with multiple contributors, and you don't want to bind the integration on one single user, you can use the GitHub action and the GitHub action then provides the files as GitHub user. One of the maintainers can merge later on. I see, okay. Excellent. Anything else you'd like to highlight here in terms of um, nice features, things that, things that we should encourage? We've, I've seen how I can invite others. So I invited Kevin. <laughs> Um, I could do the similar thing with, with friends who are native French speakers and, and they would be able to then do the same thing. Yeah, for example, but to make it easier, you can also create groups of, uh, groups of people and teams you can invite on. I think that's, yeah, I think I can, that's uh, 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 machine translation reports, working plates, create a group, I think was that. Yeah, you can also basically create a group of people. Like if you have several contributors based similar to groups on GitHub, you can create a group of people you add to a project as reviewer, or proofreader, or a translator. Do not add everyone individually. Okay, so I, I could conceptually have a German speakers group for people who are native German speakers willing to help with Jenkins translation. So German, German users of Jenkins could be in that, that group. Yeah, for example. 
Okay. And that group would be above all other projects. You can basically add two. Thank you. That that's this looks great. So I can go ahead and invite others. And anything else that we should see? I think that's basically much so far from the point of the user. I mean, there are a lot of more settings and things you can go through, but I don't think they are much interesting because they don't show stuff you need to configure anymore. Well, this is brilliant. Thanks very much, Alex. Thank you for thank you for taking us through the tour. Thank you for taking me through it. And thanks for what you've already contributed to the platform labeler. Yeah, no problem. All right. I think, I think, shall we call that topic settled for now? Yeah, I think so. All right. So if you're willing to join us again in a week, Alex, we do one more round of this to see what that pull request, how that pull request came in, uh, what the experience was. And I think what I'd like to do is see if I can deliver a release of the plugin that includes the translation so we can see that the translations really reached all the way to the user. Yeah, for sure. All right. Okay, then uh, we, and we've, we've, we're at 45 minutes in. We generally limit this session to 30. Are there any topics that we need to that we need to cover from our other notes? So this one for me was most crucial. I'm less worried about these others. Zinab is, was not uh, joined us and then had to drop off. So she code Africa, nothing to talk to there. And open PRs we do only as time allows. So I think we're set with our agenda. Any other topics I missed that we should should have discussed and didn't. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and let's let's call this session done for today. Recording should be posted in 24 to 48 hours. Alex, thanks very much for what you've done for us. Looking forward to working with CrowdIn and getting localized plugins. Yeah, great to hear. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alex. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.